Welcome to an example of integration using trig substitution. Before we try trig substitution though, we should make sure that basic u substitution won't work. So looking at our integral, notice how we might try to let u equal the radicand of 25 minus x squared. But if we do this, notice how differential u would be equal to negative 2x dx. So if the numerator was 2x dx, we could perform basic u substitution. But because of this extra factor of x here, we'll have to apply a different technique, which in this case, we'll use trig substitution. So because the integral involves the square root of 25 minus x squared, which fits the form of the square root of a squared minus x squared, where a squared is a constant, we're going to let x equal a sine theta, and then simplify using our trig identity given here. One minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. But to review, when performing trig substitution, if the integral involves the square root of a squared plus x squared, we would let x equal a tangent theta. And if the integral involved the square root of x squared minus a squared, we let x equal a secant theta. But again, in our example, since our integral involves the square root of a squared minus x squared, where a squared would be 25, and therefore a equals five, we'll let x equal five sine theta. Which means differential x would be equal to five cosine theta d theta. Now while we're here, let's sketch a reference triangle for angle theta. If x equals five sine theta, then sine theta would be equal to x divided by five. So if we sketch a right triangle and call this angle theta, we can label the opposite side x and the hypotenuse five, and therefore using the Pythagorean theorem, we can label the length of this side the square root of five squared minus x squared, or the square root of 25 minus x squared. Now let's perform substitution. We would have the integral of two times x squared. If x equals five sine theta, x squared is 25 sine squared theta. Dx is equal to five cosine theta d theta. Divided by, we have the square root of 25 minus x squared, or 25 minus 25 sine squared theta. So this is gonna simplify nicely to five cosine theta, but let's show why. Notice in the numerator we have two times 25 times five, that's gonna be equal to 250. Sine squared theta, cosine theta d theta, divided by, now if we look at the square root here, if we factored out the 25, we would have the square root of 25 times the quantity one minus sine squared theta. Well the square root of 25 would give us five, and one minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta, and the square root of cosine squared theta is equal to cosine theta. And now we can simplify there's one five and five, and fifty fives and 250. And notice how one factor of cosine theta simplifies out. So now we're left with 50 times the integral of sine squared theta d theta. And now we'll use a power reducing formula for sine squared theta. So to review, we'll use this identity here where sine squared x is equal to one half times the quantity one minus cosine two x. So notice how this angle here is double the original angle. So to show the work we'd have 50 times the integral of one half times the quantity one minus cosine two theta d theta. Well 50 times one half would be 25 so I can write this as 25 times integral of one minus cosine two theta d 
50 theta. Let's go ahead and integrate this on the next slide. Because we'll have to perform a u substitution to integrate cosine two theta, let's break this up into two integrals. So 25 times integral of one d theta minus 25 times integral of cosine two theta d theta. So for the second integral, we'll have u equals two theta. So du equals two d theta. Divide both sides by two. Notice one half du is equal to d theta. So we'll have an extra factor of one half when integrating the second integral. So we'll have 25 theta, and then we'll have minus 25 times the integral of cosine two theta. So again, if this is equal to u, d theta is equal to one half du, so the integral is going to be one half sine two theta plus c. So we have 25 theta minus 25 halves sine two theta plus c. But we want this in terms of x, not theta, so we need to perform a substitution for theta and also for sine two theta. But remember our reference triangle only involves the angle theta here, so what we're gonna do is perform a trig substitution for sine two theta. We can use the identity sine two x is equal to two sine x times cosine x. So we'd have 25 theta minus 25 halves times two sine theta cosine theta plus c. Notice the two simplify out. To perform a substitution for theta, we'll use an inverse trig function. We could use several different inverse trig functions, but if we know that sine theta equals x divided by five, then theta must equal arc sine or inverse sine of x divided by five. So let's go ahead and use arc sine. So we have 25 times arc sine x divided by five minus 25 times sine theta times cosine theta plus c. Well again, sine theta equals x divided by five and cosine theta is equal to the square root of 25 minus x squared divided by five. So we have x divided by five for sine theta and the square root of 25 minus x squared divided by five for cosine theta. And simplifying one more time, these two factors of five simplify with the 25. So we finally have our antiderivative is equal to 25 arc sine x divided by five minus, this would be x times the square root of 25 minus x squared plus c. This would be our antiderivative. I hope you found this explanation helpful.